Now on the last page here we're asked to solve the triangle. So we're given some sides and sometimes some angles, of course, we're only told the 90 degree angle here in this one. And solve the triangle means to find all unknown sides and angles. So since I do know the angle C is 90, I do need to find angle A and angle B, and I need to find this side down here, it's the one side I don't know. Now in triangles, if that's angle B, then this would normally be called side B, so I would label this with a lowercase b. The hypotenuse here would actually be a lowercase c if I wanted to label it. And the 7.3 side is opposite angle A, so I would label that with a lowercase a if I needed to label it. Now, it really doesn't matter what you, fi what you find first. I could find angle A first, or angle B, or I could even find side B. It really doesn't matter. But in the triangle, I'm going to choose to find angle A first. And so I'm going to label my sides in relation to angle A. So in relation to angle A, this would be the opposite side. And the 10 up here would be the hypotenuse. And the uh, side down here would be the adjacent. So for angle A, this is the adjacent, this is the opposite, and that would be the hypotenuse. Now if I'm finding angle A first, then I'm going to use the opposite side and the hypotenuse to find angle A. I cannot use the adjacent until I find how long the adjacent is. Now the trig ratio that involves opposite, because I know the opposite and the hypotenuse, is sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. So that's why if I chose to find A first, I would use the sine ratio because those are the two sides I know. I couldn't use, for example, cosine because cosine involves the adjacent and the hypotenuse, and while I do know the hypotenuse, I don't yet know the adjacent. So using the uh, sine ratio, we'll fill in 7.3 and 10 in place of opposite and hypotenuse. 7.3 divided by 10, of course, is 0 0.73. And then just like we did in the previous page with cosine, I need to find angle A, so the function used in your calculator is you take the inverse sine of the 0.73, and that will return what the angle is and it works out to approximately 47 degrees. This is what the calculation looks like. Inverse sine of 0.73 is 46.8863, etc. And so that would round to 47, the nearest degree. So in our diagram, we'll label this with a 47 degree angle. Now, I could use some trigonometry to find angle B, but probably the easiest way to find angle B is to remember that this is a right triangle, so we have a 90 degree angle here. And since they all add to 180, if this is 90, then the acute angles A and B must also add to 90, because the two of those add to 90, plus this 90 gives you 180 degrees. So the easiest way to find B is to take 90 and subtract that 47 from it, and then angle B is 43 degrees. And so we'll put 43 degrees in the diagram. So we know all the angles now, we just need to find this adjacent side. And you actually have several ways you could find that. You could use some trigonometry or you, you could use uh, Pythagoras' theorem. And I'll actually do both. So the whole point of this lesson is to work with sine and cosine ratios. So uh, I'm going to do that as much as possible here to show you as much as I can in three pages. So we're trying to find the adjacent side. So I would look for a trig ratio that involves adjacent. And I actually have two choices. I could use the tan because tan is opposite over adjacent. But this note is actually more about sine and cosine. That's why I'll use the cosine ratio. Cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. And notice while I don't know the adjacent, I do know the hypotenuse and I do know what angle A is. So since I do know the hypotenuse and I do know angle A, I have two of the three things in this that I know. The adjacent is the only thing I don't know, so if I only have one unknown, then I can solve to find that unknown. Now, substituting the 47 degrees in place of angle A, the adjacent side we would call B. There's angle B, so this would be side B over here, so that's why I'm calling it B. And if you want to leave it as just adjacent ADJ, that would be fine. The hypotenuse is 10, so there's 10 substituted in place of the hypotenuse. Now, the cosine of 47 degrees has a denominator of 1. We're going to cross multiply to solve for b. And so b would be the product of 10 and the cos of 47 degrees 
divided by this 1. Remember, you multiply the two things in the diagonal, you know, so 10 times cos 47, and divided by the 1 denominator of the cos 47 degrees. So b is equal to 10 times the cos of 47. If you want to put the over 1 here, you can, but you don't need to. And so we would just multiply t the cos of 47 degrees by 10, which works out to 6.8. This is what the calculation looks like. I, that's exactly what I would punch in my calculator, 10 times the cos of 47, 6.8. Well, now, the, notice it's not exact. That's why the approximately symbol is here. To one uh, tenth of a decimal, uh, it would work out to 6.8 centimeters. So that's the last side. Now, another way you could find this, other than using the uh, tan ratio, is you could use Pythagoras' theorem, and that would be fine, too. And though the, the, so this side here we know is 6.8. So here's the check with the Pythagoras' theorem. Side B here would be equal to the root of 10 squared minus 7.3 squared. And if you take 10 and squared and subtract 7.3 squared, you get 46.71. And so we would take the square root of that to get, again, 6.8. So that's just an alternate solution to uh, doing this up here. This is what the calculation looks like here. Of course, the square root of 46.71 is 6.83, etc. Notice it's not exactly the same as this because we've done a little bit of rounding, but to uh, one decimal place, they are the same, 6.8 centimeters. And that's the end of the lesson.